This is a review for the Safe Life First Response Multi Threat Vest rated for 3A. The reason I'm making this review is because when I was purchasing this vest, there was very little information out there, very few videos on YouTube, just focusing on this carrier itself. And uh, this is a big investment, whether you're law enforcement, security, EMS, fire, this is an investment and you want to know what you're getting. And um, when I was researching it, there was very little info on it. The base price on this vest is $469 and that's bare bones just for the, the carrier and the armor, nothing else. It comes in black, which is what this is, navy blue and red. So you have to match your department's colors. It comes in a couple different colors. The 3A provides protection up to 44 Magnum and even includes double op buck and shotgun slugs. Uh, I got this vest on Black Friday where they were running a deal. Free shipping plus 10% off, and I also stacked it with another 10% off coupon. So with the vest and with custom patches, I paid about $400 for this vest. The weight is about 5.4 pounds, and uh, that's just with the Kevlar on the vest, no plates, no equipment. So this vest comes in two different variations. Classic, which is what you see here. Classic just refers to that it has an eyelet for a badge and a patch over here for a name tag. There's also modified, which instead of a eyelet, you just have a long Velcro strip to put an identifier, police or whatever, whatever it is. Um, in my opinion, I think that the modified looks better, but if your department requires you to have your badge up on your chest, then you're going to have to go classic. If I could wear my badge on a belt line or not have to wear it, if I could just wear a big emblem on the front, I would, but um, this is what I have to deal with. I think that it makes my badge look very small. It's a regular size badge, but that's just me. Um, this vest also can come with reflective strips. I opted out of those. Um, I think they look a little gaudy. And since our uniform is all black, if we're doing any sort of nighttime traffic or, or details or walking at night, we have to wear our reflective vest anyways. So those strips really weren't uh, beneficial to me, and I didn't really like the look of them. Um, I also got custom patches made. I think I mentioned that. Um, I am an auxiliary police officer, and because of that, we our identifiers have to say auxiliary police. They can't just say regular police. So my custom patches I did name tag up here, which I took off for obvious reasons, my agency's uh, letters here, and then this big patch on the back. And uh, that was $25 for those three patches, and it shipped the same as other vests that had just the generic patches with them. I have a buddy who got regular ones, and they came on the exact same day. We ordered on the same day. So these are very nice black patch with white lettering. So now I'm going to show you the layout of this vest and uh, show you some options on how you can set it up. So just to give you a reference on the size of these Velcro panels, I have uh, two patches that are uh, hat patches, I guess you would call them. So you can see how they would fit right there as a name tag. You could just about fit two side by side on the utility pouch, and then you can fit one on this pouch as well. So if you wanted to put a thin blue line tag, you could probably fit one here. If you don't have your agency's um, letters up here, you could put another patch here. You could get a custom name tag one if you don't get one from Safe Life. Um, so that's just to give a reference of what those panels look like. So this carrier does have pockets to carry plates in the front and back if, you, uh, if you're looking for rifle protection. Um, what's cool about this is that it opens from the top here. So you can put other stuff in this pocket if you're not running plates. My recommendation would be, and what I do carry, is two vented chest seals. They can go right in there, stay fairly flat. They don't get too beat up. Um, if you wanted to put any kind of paperwork you could. You could slide a uh, case file in there if you wanted to. Um, you could also maybe throw some flex cuffs in there. Anything flat um, would probably be okay. 
So there's several different ways that you can load this vest out to utilize it. Um, one way would be medical. So you could really load this thing up with medical gear. Nothing will really fit in this flashlight. You could leave the flashlight pouch. But uh, in this big pouch here, you could throw a quick lot. You could throw some compressed gauze in there. You could throw the scissors, trauma shears, either in this pouch or you could fit them in this pouch. Tourniquet fits really nicely in this pouch. Can fit in this pouch, but if you do that, this gets a little messed up. So as you, if you're not running any patches on this, it'll probably be okay. If you are, it'll look a little funky. Same thing with a Israeli bandage. If you put it in there, it's going to make a weird bulge. And if you have your agency's letters here, it's not going to come out well. Israeli bandage can also fit very well in this pouch here. Um, as I said before, I think everyone should grab chest seals and throw them in the back there. That's space that's not utilized unless you are running plates. And it's always a good thing to have. Say you want to load this vest out for a little more firepower or just to get some extra weight off your uh, waistline, you can definitely do that. Sub out the flashlight. This uh, Glock 23 magazine. It fits in there okay. It's a little short for it. Um, I think even a regular duty size magazine might be a little short. If you put a little styrofoam or something in the bottom there, you might get enough clearance. You could carry an extra magazine there. What's disappointing is this pouch to me, and I'll touch on this a little bit later. Um, I thought that maybe you could run a full-sized uh, AR magazine. And if you wanted to tuck this back, I guess you could. But um, there's not real great retention there. And this strap is just not long enough to hold a full-size 30-round magazine in there. I'm sure a 20-round magazine would fit okay. Um, you, could be, you could run one in this pouch. Again, you'd run the same problem of... Uh, where this, this uh, Velcro would be all distorted. You could very easily fit a backup gun. This is a Ruger LCP2. Very easily fit one of those in there. If I was to do that, I'd probably get a custom uh, Kydex, where maybe it would fit the whole footprint of the pouch to keep it a little more secure in there. You could very easily fit some extra cuffs. If you want to get one set of cuffs off your belt line, you could fit them in there. Another problem I'll touch on later, though, is that there's no dividers in this pouch, so everything's loose. So, you know, it might be a little bit of a problem with your backup gun and your cuffs, everything rubbing against each other. Um, but that's how you could load it out if you wanted to just get a little extra firepower or just get some of the weight off of your belt line. So in this part, I'm going to show you how the vest fits and how I generally run it. So my patches, my badge, everything is removed uh, for anonymity. So starting over here, in the uh, what I think is a radio pouch, we have our tourniquet, and then behind there is black pair of trauma shears. And I run the strap through the trauma shears, which keeps them cocked over to my left side and a little bit out of the way. Next pocket, flashlight. This is an A Tactical A1S. It's about the smallest flashlight that you could put in here without it being uh, completely covered up. But that holds out just fine. And then over here in the utility pocket, I've got a Spyderco knife clipped to the pocket. I also have a tactical pen clipped to the pocket. It's got a glass breaker on the end. Field notes notebook um, with some other stuff inside. Uh, codes and uh, basically our roster, everyone's numbers. Um, so this is great for taking notes about a detail or, or your shift for that night. Down at the bottom, I also have a pen floating around, an extra pen. And then lastly, I've got a quick clot. As I said before, in the panel here, I have chest seals. I'm not going to take them out. And you'll see right here, I have another pen tucked into the top of the, the plate pouch. So this one is most accessible, and this is the one that I use most often. So you're going to see the fit. I put on a light colored shirt so you can see it a little easier. In a black uniform, um, it's very hard to see where the vest ends and begins. It blends right in. Well, you'll see the vest runs 
fairly high. It should be right between the top of your belly button and uh, right where your neck begins. And I'll do a, uh, a walk around to show you how it looks. Sides are elastic. This is fairly adjustable vest. You can adjust the shoulder straps and the sides. I'm about 5'6", 160 pounds, and this is a size small short. Now, it might look a little weird having all this empty space here, but you're going to need to have access to your duty belt. So that's why I have a short, because I have a short torso. You don't want to get in the way of your gun or your baton or your cuffs or anything like that. So that's why it runs short like this, and this is how the vest is supposed to be. This is from Safe Life. They said it's supposed to go right to the top of your belly button. So it might seem a little awkward at first, but it's totally normal. That's totally how it's supposed to look. Touching on the custom patches again real quick. Um, what I like about Safe Life is that you don't need to provide any credentials for the patches, whether it's police or auxiliary police or whatever else. Because um, that really is up to the consumer to to buy and use responsibly. I don't think the company should be at fault if someone buys a police vest and goes out and impersonates a police officer. Um, I've had run-ins with Quartermaster before where I tried to buy a winter hat that said police on it. And I sent them my credentials, uh, scans of my credentials, ended up calling into them, and they still ended up calling my superiors just to double-check that I was with the auxiliary police. So it's kind of a pain in the butt and um, not a great experience. So I like that, that they, uh, no questions asked, they'll send you whatever patches you want, and it's up to you to use them responsibly.